I grew up surrounded by the iconography of the Pontiac Firebird. My father had an 82 Trans Am. I was always in love with the designs, the logo, and the name, Firebird. So when I really got into cars and I wanted a project, that's what I looked for. And that's what I found. It was a few states over, but I was willing to make the drive. It's not a Trans Am, it is a Firebird Esprit. This car rolled out of the factory with a 305 and a Turbo 350 transmission. I don't have to tell you that the 77 and 78 Firebirds are iconic. This was maybe one of the last muscle cars, but because of the smog era, some people don't even like calling these muscle cars. I'm not one of those people. I talked to the guy on the phone, grabbed a trailer, and drove four hours with a friend to go check it out. The 305 was gone. In its place, a rebuilt 350 installed by the seller. So despite having a new engine installed, many things weren't hooked up, and it wasn't quite ready to drive. But with a little ingenuity, we got to hear it run. That is indeed a beer can full of gasoline being used to start the car. Yeah, the starter does sound a little rough, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's not it's horrible. Not bad, no. Like I said, I got spacers in there. I don't know. I just don't know. So after checking everything out and talking the seller down to $1,900, I bought the car. It's not the most desirable year, it's not the most desirable model, and it's not a show car, but it was mine. The 10 inch Kragers on the rear were actually so wide that it didn't fit on the trailer, and we had to use this Ford Ranger to push it up and over the brake light housings on the trailer. So here's the story of this car as best I know it. This car was owned and driven in Nevada until somewhere around 2008 when I believe the engine gave out. I found these pictures of the car on the auction site the guy I bought it from bought it from and it sold for $700. So the guy I bought it from purchased it online, had it put on a truck and shipped all the way from Nevada to Ohio. He put in the engine and transmission and it sat in his yard till I brought it home. So after buying it, we dragged the car the four hours back home and dropped it in my garage on October 30th, 2014. Then, in the following months and years, I got to work. First step is to clean everything out of the interior. Most of the carpet was already stripped, so I just went ahead and stripped everything out that I could. If it wasn't clear already, this isn't a restoration. This isn't some professionally built, high horsepower show car. This is my car that my friends and I put together in my garage on spare time and spare change. After cleaning out the car, I laid down some undercoating and then bed liner for the entire floor pan. Then I started to scrounge together the parts I needed. I was missing the front seat belts, so I found the ones I needed on eBay. I found this rusted out 77 Trans Am on Craigslist and pulled the steering wheel and hood hinges out of it. I sandblasted the aluminum on the steering wheel, clear coated it, and then did a custom wrap. I spent a fair amount of time messing with the gauges, but they're not quite right. When I bought it, the odometer read 82,000 miles. I have no reason to believe this is not true. The previous owner had acquired quite a few black trim pieces because he wanted to paint the car flat black. I basically scrounged together the interior from the best looking parts that came with the car. I threw on these little switches for the power windows because I couldn't make the factory one work right and replacements were expensive. I replaced the ignition lock cylinder because it was loose and the keys were messed up. Just look at the dust that came out of this thing. The first time I changed the oil was pretty concerning. It was very brown. It must have been condensation or somehow water got into the engine while it was sitting. And the fuel didn't look much better. But in the interest of getting the car to run, I cobbled some things together and tried to get it to start. I can see the fuel going through the filter. Yeah, I can see it like bubbling up one year when you're cranking. It's not bubbling anymore. <laughs> it would crank, but it took a while of messing with the carburetor and the fuel system to get things started. Right after this, I cut off the entire exhaust. It was restrictive, the cat was clogged, it all had to go. So for a little while, the car was running open manifolds.
kind of dig the sound of open manifolds. It just sounds to me like the Demo Derby or Dirty Mary Crazy Larry, and I love it. But it is way too loud. But now that the car was running, I rolled it outside and gave it a first wash. These are the first good pictures I have of the car in full daylight. I painted the trunk and spoiler with black spray paint to give another layer over the faded gray primer. As much as I do like Kragers, I don't like Unilug wheels, I don't like how expensive the rear tires are, and I just don't like the look of those rears on this car. So I started looking for some Rally or Snowflake wheels to put on instead. I went through and changed all the fluids, including the transmission fluid, the differential oil, and even the power steering fluid. I had some problems with the starter until one day there was a bang and then the starter would only freewheel. I took it off and realized the housing had cracked, so I swapped it out for a remanufactured starter and used a starter brace to make it more stable. A lot of the car wasn't hooked up and some of the things that were, weren't done so well. So there were a whole lot of small things I needed to go through and fix. Like the radiator mount, it was a bungee cord. So I made my own and got a shroud off of eBay. I'm pretty terrified of that flex fan, and I hope to replace it with electric radiator fans one day. There are only a few things I've done to the engine. I went through and set preload on all the lifters, and I had to replace the leaking oil pan gasket. Once inside the crankcase, I found there was definitely some sludge left over. I did my best to clean off everything I could and confirmed that this is indeed a rebuilt and 60 over engine. I threw on some cheapo headers off of Craigslist, which work, but I've never been able to get them to seal all the way. I got a complete 2.5 inch exhaust kit with turbo mufflers off of Summit, and some cheapo exhaust tips from the local auto parts store. It's still pretty messy, but things were starting to come together. I replaced the shocks with these cheap load leveling ones because I was hoping to not have to replace the drooping springs. Unfortunately, I then realized that one of the rear leaf springs was cracked, so I needed new leaf springs, and at that point I might as well get new front springs, and at that point I might as well get a complete polyurethane suspension bushing kit. Sure. And also, polyurethane engine and transmission mounts. Every piece of rubber in this car was completely dry rotted and cracked, probably from the Nevada sun. I was lucky that all the body mount bolts came out easy, and I'm very glad that I decided to replace them all. I kept having problems with the carburetor, so I decided I really needed to get all the old gas out of the system. I took off the fuel tank and cleaned it, and it was in good shape, so I just repainted it and put it back on cleared out the fuel lines, and rebuilt the carburetor, which was good because there were actually a couple pieces missing. But once that was done, no more fuel issues, and this thing ran great. I replaced the wheel cylinders in the back and the brake calipers in the front with remanufactured units, and replaced the hoses with braided steel ones. I had some problems with pulley alignment that I eventually fixed with washers and trial and error, what I kept doing was flipping the V-belt over in the grooves, but luckily the belt never came all the way off. I re-greased the front wheel bearings and decided they were okay for now, but I would have to replace them later on. After replacing the front coil springs, I took the car to my local community college, where we aligned it. I went up to Carlisle, Pennsylvania and met a guy with something like 16 Camaros and Firebirds on his property. He sold me four 15x7 snowflake wheels and I got some tires mounted and balanced on them. I definitely like this look better. I would prefer the rally wheels, but those are usually a bit more expensive. Now that it didn't have those old unbalanced tires on it, I could really start to drive this car. But of course, I can't leave well enough alone. The intake manifold it was using was a cast iron spread bore with a square bore adapter. I got an Edelbrock Performer RPM off of Craigslist and threw that on. But that meant that even the drop base air cleaner didn't quite clear the hood. So I figured, screw it, and went full 70s and cut a hole in the hood to install this street scoop from Mr. Gasket. I've gone back and forth on whether or not I like the kind with the throttle linkage like this, but it's what I ended up with. I had to do a fair amount of modification to get it sitting low enough to the hood for my liking. I've fixed all kinds of small things and done a whole lot of tuning on it, but it's pretty much gone unchanged since then. I've put 4,000 miles on it. 
The whole lot of time driving the car, tweaking it, driving it, and enjoying it. I got these subframe connectors off of Craigslist, which stiffen up the whole body of the vehicle. I finally replaced the front wheel bearings with new ones, and I replaced the steering center link because it had become very loose. I drove the car all the time and all over Maryland. I feel too guilty driving the car when the winter roads are particularly salty, but otherwise I have been driving it year round. It's been pretty wild looking back on these last three years with the car. I've met so many incredible friends simply through the car culture that owning this car has dragged me into. This Firebird wasn't my first vehicle, but it was my first car, and it's what really got me into working on cars. Just about everything I know about cars can be traced back to this one. It doesn't have cherry red paint. I don't keep it showroom clean. The interior is still a mess. There's no radio. The engine rattles everything in the car. It has highway gears, so it's not particularly fast. But it's my car. I know it, and I love it. I wish my father could have seen it. I know he would have loved it too. Driving this car down a country road on a warm summer day with the windows down and the engine rumbling never gets old. This car, which just turned 40 years old, is a window to the past and feels just a little bit magical. But make no mistake, this blast from the past is still evolving and it's about to get a big kick in the ass.